Hey, we're going to talk about the anatomy of the heart. So let's start with kind of an overview. So let's let's think about the heart and what it does. Is that the heart we require to pump, you know, many times a minute. And it's going to be an organ that has to pump whether we're awake or whether we're asleep. And starts, you know, by before we're born and potentially, technically, can still be pumping after we die if we consider uh, brain death as the signal of death. Now, the heart is a series of chambers and a series of pipes leading to these chambers and how things move from one chamber to the next from one pipe to the next is by pressure differences things go from high pressure to low pressure now let's start to have a look so as we see the heart first of all we see that there's a number of blood vessels that feed the heart itself and those are the coronary blood vessels and um, this is just a bit of an overview this is a video for people who kind of want to get to know a little bit about their heart now as we see, we have sort of two parts to the heart. We have the right side of the heart, and the right side is made of an upper chamber and a lower chamber. Okay, we can see them there. Now, so blood that's returning to the heart that has less oxygen, often we say it's deoxygenated. It's not like it's completely empty of oxygen, still a lot of oxygen, but less oxygen. What it does is the blood is collected from the lower part of the body and comes up through here, the superior, inferior vena cava, I should say. And blood from higher up in the body comes down from the superior vena cava. And that blood enters the first chamber here, which is the atrium, the right atrium. Now, blood will fill this chamber. And as this chamber is filling, the ventricle, which is the lower chamber, is undergoing contracting. So atria, which are the upper chambers, are relaxed. Ventricles are contracting while the upper ones are relaxed and they switch. So what happens is blood comes in from either the superior, from the superior and the inferior vena cava and will fill the atrium. When the pressure in the atrium is bigger than the pressure in the ventricle, blood will flow and will flow down through a valve okay it's going to flow down through this valve here now let's have a look at this valve this valve has a number of what we call cusps these are these little flaps and you notice coming off the cuffs we have these little filaments these are called cordae tendinae in some ways they're like little bungee cords because eventually when this ventricle this right ventricle fills full of blood it's going to contract so it's going to build a lot of pressure which is going to force those cusps to close so blood doesn't regurgitate all the way back into the upper atrium that would be bad it's counterproductive we don't want bl the blood to go there so when those close as this contracts pressure will cause those valves to close and then the blood will exit from the right ventricle through this. This is the pulmonary valve. Now from the pulmonary valve the blood will travel up and then it can sent off some of it to the left lung and some of it to the right lung. And of course there it's going to be oxygenated. Now let's close down the right side of the heart. Now the blood then comes back and the blood comes back, and you can only see little little remnants of it here. So there'll be vessel, vessels that will take the blood from the lungs back to the left side of the heart. And you can see there's some there and some here. So some to take it from the right lung and the left lung. And it's going to go into a chamber, which is largely back there. But we can have a little peek. If I fold this open, you notice now we're on the left side of the heart. Earlier we looked at the right side. So, blood is going to enter into the left atrium, and from the left atrium, it will pass through this valve into the right ventricle. So it's gonna pass down into the right ventricle. Now, when the right ventricle fills full of blood, it will start a contraction, and that's gonna build up pressure, which will cause these valves to close. And by the way, that's why these cordae tendinae are here. They're little bungee cords, as I said earlier, to make sure that the valve doesn't flip the right way and blood goes back. That shouldn't happen. It can happen um, in disease processes, but usually doesn't. Now, when the pressure builds up here, the blood is going to be forced out. 
and it's hard to see but if you look tucked right back in there that is the aortic valve so any of the blood here in the left ventricle will be forced through that aortic valve now where does that go it's hard to see because there's so much mass here but the blood will travel up here and this vessel is your aortic arch and this is now going to head down into your thoracic aorta, your abdominal aorta, and we're going to start giving off branches. So these branches are about supplying things like the head and neck. So that's the basis of the heart. We have four chambers. Things move from one chamber to the next based on pressure. And what we have between each chamber are valves that ensure that we end up with one way flow. Now, if you really want to know the names of the valves on the right side, Okay, on the right side of the heart, the valve right there is known as the right atrioventricular. It sits between the atrium and the ventricular. But the word I always remember is rat because this valve has another name. Because if I actually look carefully, there are three. One, two, three cusps. So this is also known as the tricuspid. So if you remember the word rat, then that'll help you remember right atrioventricular valve is also known as the tricuspid. The valve leading out of the right ventricle is going to the lung, so it is the pulmonary valve, also known as one of the semilunar valves. On the left side of the heart, we have the left atrioventricular valve, separates the atrium from the ventricle. Now this one's interesting because it only has two of those flaps, two of those cusps. So it's also known as a mitral, named after a bishop's mitral, how that they were that had a big floppy bit at the back and front and stood straight up. Also, because it has two, it's also known as the bicuspid. So the word I use to remember all the names for the one on the left side is lamb left atrioventricular mitral bicuspid okay thanks for watching just a quick introduction uh, there'll be more videos coming up about the in-depth anatomy physiology electrical conduction system etc if you enjoy this hit the subscribe button um, and have a great day and keep keep working on your anatomy